I want to give you some information about the PMP exam and I want to do it really quick. I want you to know that ITTOs are not tested wrote on your PMP exam. ITTOs are not tested wrote on your PMP exam. So all that time you're spending cramming definitions is no good. Instead of wasting that time cramming definitions, all you really need to do is understand what that tool and technique is and where it is used, but not cramming because the exam is not a rote exam. And you know what else I've heard? I have also heard that the exam does not have a whole bunch of formulas. So those of you having sleepless nights over formulas, you might have a rude shock because you may get into the test and realize the most of what they're asking you is earned value is bigger than planned value. What does that mean? Planned value is smaller than earned value. What does that mean? Actual cost is smaller than earned value and things like that. Or they might give you numbers. SPI is 5.2. What does that mean? Or CPI is 0.5. What does that mean? And things such as that. You need to understand what the numbers mean as opposed to cramming formulas for earned value. You know what else I've heard? I heard quite recently that the PMP exam is not focused a whole lot on any one PMBOK guide. I heard that the exam is about 90% situational, which means the questions start off like, you are a project manager on a small IT engineering project. This and that happened. This and that was said. What should you do next? Or you're a project manager on a construction project. There's a risk that you could be over budget or behind schedule. What should you do? Things like that. That's how the exam is based, which is why a lot of the professionals getting certified keep telling me, Phil, it's not about cramming process names or definitions. It's about understanding what I'm doing. And you know what else I heard? I heard that when you're asked questions on the exam, the process names are seldomly used. So if they're describing developing a project management plan, they won't call it develop project management plan. They could say you're working with a team to craft a strategy to execute the project. So it's not always going to be a direct, you are working in develop project management plan. No. Or in instances where you may be working on like a project charter, you could say you are assisting the project, the project sponsor in creating an authorization document for the project. Well, you should know what that means. Do you get what I'm saying? Because there's this misnomer that all the terms that you're reading in the sixth edition or process groups or practice guide or even PMBOK 7 are going to show up as is. They're not. They're going to be heavily disguised camouflage. That's what you need to be ready to see disguises and then when it describes what you're doing and it asks what should you do next the description is not going to be straight director managed project work it could say execute the work in the plan or if it has to do with change request it could say review the 
impact analysis with the change control board or something to that effect. So I really want you to understand the DNA of the exam, especially if you've been worrying about formulas and cramming stuff and don't do that. Just focus on really knowing, understanding the 49 processes, what each one does for you and what the sensibility, the order of direction is so that you you know I just developed a chart or what do I do next I could identify my stakeholders or I could plan I just finished doing my scope statement what comes first does my scope statement come before my WBS yes does my WBS come before my project management plan it's part of the project management plan you see what I'm saying does my stakeholder register come before my risk register yes but it's populated all throughout you see those little nuances right does my risk register come before my project charter no the project charter first these are the things you need to get familiar with my friends Okay, I came on purposely to let you know it's not a road exam and you really want to understand. Understanding is key. Okay, I want you to Google Pembuck Mainline and watch any of my numerous videos out there on the Pembuck Mainline. It is going to help you because you'll see how the different processes are integrated at higher levels okay it starts off with a project charter then you got to work on your stakeholder register then you move into developing a project management plan then you execute the work in direct and managing the project work then you do monitor and control project work you're making sure things are going according to plan right at the same time, when your deliverable is created, you should be thinking about sending it to the customer. And the customer reviews it, and then things move from there. So I really need you to be aware of these things, my friends, and don't look at the exam as being a rote exam. I hope these insights have helped you. Every now and again, I get a little insight and I want to share that with you. In terms of the percentage of the exam, the exam is at least half of the problems are going to be about problems and issues. Perhaps another quarter of the exam could be about risk and change mixed with other stuff. So there, there's there's, there's factions and concentrations because when we say risk, you could have a scope risk, a schedule risk, a cost risk, a resource risk. You understand that risk touches everything. And then problems, you could have problems, impediments, obstacles, blockers, touching all the knowledge areas. Risk, uh, I beg your pardon, you could have an impediment that touches resources, an impediment that touches communications, an impediment that touches different areas can affect cost and things like that and because you're thinking in an agile hybrid fashion you got to think in a multifaceted way okay I hope this helps open up your mind a little bit to understand the dynamics on the exam which are far beyond just PMBOK 7 or PMBOK 6 in one direction I wish you all the best my friends do me a favor and hit the like button if you've enjoyed these, this breakdown, these secrets. Hit the like button, my friends, on the Android and on Spotify, my friends on Apple devices. I see you. Hit that like button for your buddy Phil. And I'll see you again very soon. Just so you know, I've got a new course on Pembox 7 if you're keen on learning. All you need to do to learn from me and my buddy Roy, we have a 12-hour course on Udemy. 
and it's going at a crazy steal right now, you could go on down to this link I'm about to give you, pembok.pmradio.org. That's pembok.pmradio.org. All right. You take care, my friends. I wish you all the very best. Bye for now.